In today's lesson, I want to go ahead and get rid of the asteroids when we actually die and go to respawn. If we take a look here, I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Let's just fly straight ahead. Hurry up, get killed. So we blow up. The screen pops up right away. If we take a look here at all the asteroids, when we hit play again, it, it doubles. And I don't want that. Of course, if we went ahead and died, well, I'm not going to be able to because the guys are going to be shooting me. But anyway, uh, they don't disappear as well as the mobs. They don't disappear either after I die. And I don't want them to disappear when I die. I want them to disappear uh, when the game restarts. Uh, but today, I just want to work on getting these asteroids to disappear when we die. And then reappear again when we spawn again. Or at least before the game actually starts. Now, there's a couple ways we can do this. If we go ahead and jump right into the code. Uh, we could just come up to the asteroid and have it listen to when we start the game and when the player dies. And when he does, go ahead, call some sort of self-destruct method down here that destroys the, the asteroid when the player dies. And another way we could do it is to come into the asteroid manager. And when we're instantiating these asteroids, go off and save them off to some array or even a list. A list would be better. And then we just have to listen to when the player dies and then we can go ahead and just start pop them off. You know, like pop rocks. And I like this approach better because I know down the road, I'm gonna to wanna to go ahead and switch one of these asteroids to, well, I guess you can't see my air quotes, but the golden asteroid. That's the one the player has to hunt down and shoot in order to get points. And it'll be so much easier to be able just to grab one out of the list at random and go ahead and switch that to the golden one. And of course, if by some chance he manages to get through all of them, I don't know, he, he wins, but I highly doubt he'll be able to do it the way that we have the game set up right now. So I like that idea better, so I'm gonna use that. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna need generics. But it does not need to be exposed in the inspector. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a list of asteroids, which I will just call, well, we have asteroid up there, which is the prefab. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this. Asteroid prefab. And this list I'm gonna call asteroids or singular, let's go singular. And then I like to initiate them in my start. We could do it up at the top as well. Let's go ahead, just, just to keep the lines of code to a minimum. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that off. I'm gonna have to jump back into Unity and reassign that prefab to my asteroid manager because I went ahead and changed the name. No problem, we got it right here. I'll jump back into the code. And now when we go ahead and create one, the instantiation command actually does return an asteroid or, or sorry, a, a game object, if you wish. So I'm just gonna add it to my list. We'll have an asteroid temp equals this. And I might be able to typecast it this way as an asteroid. I've never actually tried this. Let's just go ahead, we'll save it, jump back into Unity, see if we get an error for that. All right, so we got a private field that we're not using, great. So it does work out. I've never actually tried to typecast it that way. So now that we have the asteroid temp, we can go ahead and say, list.add, sorry, not list.add, asteroids, nope, not the capital, asteroid.add, and just do temp. Now I could have actually just had that up here as well, but it's such a huge block of code because of the, the, the transform positioning. I'm just gonna go ahead and save it off to a temp and then put it in this way. Great, so we are saving them off to a list. And just to show this list, is being populated correctly. I'm gonna go ahead and make it public uh, with the asteroid selected or the asteroid manager. If I hit start, we should see all the asteroids pop up here. Of course, I have to hit play, play, blah, blah, blah. We have to hit the play button. So there we go, we got 125 asteroids working great. Now I need a way to destroy them when the player dies. So that means we need to listen for it. First off, event manager dot on player death. And we need a method for it. I'm going to quickly put it right here. Uh, void destroy asteroid. And that's the method I'll call. And of course, we'll copy that, come down to on disable. Make sure we stop listening for it. There we go. Uh, I'm going to get an error. But that's only because I'm moving it. And I'm actually gonna put it right here under the instantiate. No, I'm actually gonna put it above instead. Right here, so we have the place, we have the destroy, then we have the couple functions that are actually used to instantiate. So that means I'm gonna to wanna to iterate through the list, call some function, and let's take a look at the asteroid class. 
because I know I'm going to want to call something like self-destruct. So come down, we can make a method called self-destruct, but what's self-destruct going to do? It's just going to call probably explosion. Uh, so right here is where things blow up. We'll have to play around with it a bit because we actually have the code in here for when the player dies to fire off the event. And we don't want to fire off the event when the asteroid dies. So we want some sort of like self-destruct or maybe move this out to another method called, uh, I don't know, um, a player blew up and then that calls the, calls the event as well as calling the blow up method. So what we could do is actually call the explosion component itself. Uh, the thing is we have it saved as a asteroid. And I might want to do other things besides just the, the blow up part. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and in asteroids create a self-destruct. And I'll go ahead and do that down here. And of course, since we're calling from outside the class, we need to be public. There we go. And of course, don't forget that return type. And for now, all I'm going to do is get the component. Explosion. And I'm going to call uh, blah, 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 blow up. And I am going to change the blow up method that's already there so that it doesn't call the event. I'm going to want some sort of player blew up so it calls the event for that. And let's do that now before I forget. So right above here, public void player died. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. Then I'm also going to call blow up. And I'm sure there's probably a better spot to put that uh, this call, but I'm fine with it there right now. So I'm gonna have to take a look to see where I was calling blow up before. I think it was in here, right? Shields take damage, if the shield hits zero. So maybe um, some sort of player script, was it called from there? Quick look. Actually, that doesn't make sense because it should be, I thought I was handling all damage inside of explosion. So I've been hit. If we have a shield, if we don't have shields return, if we do, uh, we called shield take damage, which just goes up to the display. Let's take a look here on collision. Uh, let's take a look at the shield. So right here is where we're taking damage. And right here is where we're calling the blow up. So now we're not calling blow up. What are we calling in? Player death or something like that. At the bottom, yeah, player died. So I'm just going to go ahead, put that in there. And to be fine, actually, to be honest, we could just stick it with blow up. And let's just go ahead and move this call there. Oh, I already forget where it was. <laughs> was I in shield? Yeah. Now the downside of this is um, if I ever want to put a shield on something else, I'm gonna have to take a look at how to handle this, but that's fine. I don't tend to have shields on anything else right now. But yeah, we'll go ahead, we'll call blow up. Uh, before we call blow up, I should fire off this event, then call blow up. I'm going to go ahead and save that, close it off, come back into explosion. We no longer actually need this method. There we go. And now blow up just goes ahead and instantiates the, the blow up prefab, and then destroys itself. Come back into here, and we're calling blow up. That works great. We'll come back into the asteroid manager. And now we can just go for each, and then the type, which is asteroid. I'm just going to call it ast in asteroid. Go ahead and call ast dot self destruct. There we go. I'm going to save that off. Jump back into Unity. Let's go fix any errors I have. Woohoo, none. And let's go ahead and take a look at that prefab for the asteroid just to make sure I actually do have uh, prefabs assigned. So I do, I have the same one. Let's go ahead and make something different for um, the explosion. Should be renamed to Sparks or something like that. It's from the milder. That's where we collide. So it's something. Very small. Oh, it's fire burst. Eh. I don't want to use the same one that I'm using on the player. Of course, by doing it that way, I can't see it. So there we go. It's something a little bit different. So I'm going to use that one. So let's go ahead. We'll jump back into prefabs. Let's grab the asteroid. Uh, to lock it. Explosion prefab. Huh, I wonder why I got the explosion there as well. Anyway, 
Uh, I want the boom. We'll go ahead, we'll unlock it, save it. Uh, let's start it up and take a look. Now this is gonna make them all blow up at once and I'm probably gonna wanna change it so they blow up one at a time. So there we go, they all blew up at once. And they left behind a lot of crap here. And I think that's why I was using the explosion prefab in here. Nope. Ah, that's the one we made. That's what it is. Okay. So let's change that a bit to have it destroy in a random amount of time between, I don't know, zero and one second. So at the top of the asteroid manager, I'm gonna come in and make a static. And I guess it actually doesn't need to be static. I was thinking of make, going ahead and putting it on the asteroid. And I actually think I like that better. Let's go ahead, do the asteroid. Now the reason why I'm making it static is because I want it to be the same value for every asteroid. And what I wanna do is say, I want the asteroid to blow up in between zero and one second from now. So I'm gonna make a static. Float destruction delay is equal to 1.0F. And I'm only ever using this in one place. So I wouldn't feel bad about not making a static for it. Uh, but again, I just want to reiterate the static means that this value is the same for every asteroid, every instance of an asteroid. So as soon as I change this value, it changes it for all. And that's kind of the thing I want to drive home. So now what I call self-destruct, I'm actually going to go ahead and make a new method that I can invoke. Public void, go boom. I'll go ahead, add this in there. And now I can say, so float timer is equal to random dot range. And we're gonna say zero comma, I delayed destruction. Now there are other things we could do. We could go ahead and make it a constant. Now there's lots of things we could do that. We could just put the one in here. Like I said, we're just using it the one time. But I just feel like using a static. So we got the timer. Now I can just say invoke. The method I want to invoke is go boom. And I want to invoke it in timer. So sometime between zero and one second. Save this off. Let's go ahead. We'll try that. I've uh, still got all of those prefabs I got to destroy as far as the, the particle systems go. So I'm going to have to set it up to have those be destroyed too. Go ahead, we'll start it up. Apply into that wall. Oh. Well, it's gonna take a little longer to die. Line myself back up with that wall. I can just hit something. Oh my God. Kill me. Kill me. <laughs> you guys suck. What are you, clone troopers? There we go. And I missed it. <laughs> After all that, I, excuse me, I missed it. We'll try one more time. There we go. Boom. And there we go. They all pop off like, well, like pop rock. I think the only other thing I want to do is to go ahead and delay the screen maybe popping up so he can't hit that play button right away. So we can do that through the UI. Be the main menu one, so game UI. So we have the show UI, disable, show main menu. Let's go ahead and switch this to an I enumerator. And then we can just do new wait for seconds. And we can go ahead and put a one in there. Uh, since we have it set to a static inside of Asteroid, we could also just make this public now. And that means inside of game UI, we can come in here and say, asteroid dot and then destruction delay that way if we want to go ahead and set it to two seconds later on down the road we don't have to come in here so let's go ahead we'll jump in oh we got an error and now that's because i went ahead and changed the signature here i've gone ahead and given it a return type and if we went ahead and looked at the signature for this event for the delegate i would said it can't have a return type so I'm gonna go ahead, and switch this back to void, no return type. And I've got it delayed now. So void, delay, 
main menu, display. I hate to do it this way, but I am actually going to go ahead and do it this way. And I'll just go ahead, invoke the method I want to invoke. And the time from now that I want to invoke it in will be asteroid.instruction delay. So it's going to wait a full second. And to be honest, the particle system goes off for a bit too. So I'm actually going to take this and multiply it by three. Air should go away. There we go. I like to hit clear sometimes. So let's go ahead. We'll start it up. Hit play. Try to get to that wall. Oh, I'm going to hit an asteroid, aren't I? It popped up right away. What did I do wrong? Did I put it in the wrong spot? So when the game starts up, it goes show main menu. And I want to change that to be delay show main menu. We'll go ahead, we'll start this back up, take another look. We're going to start it up, try to get to that wall before we blow up. I just want to see if it's going to pop up. It's not. I should have just hit the wall. Well, there we go. We blew up. It's going to take about three seconds, and then it pops up. Great. That's exactly what I wanted. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.